Alas, poor HD camera, I knew it well. Like it or not, but 4K will become the new standard for video in the coming years. But for the early adopters amongst you out there, there will be a more current dilemma. Do you go with average quality or the best quality? In this video, I'll tell you about the two different types of 4K camera and which might be the best available for you. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the last year or more, you'll have heard about 4K, or its near equivalent of UHD, which is exactly double the size of HD, although most people call them both 4K. The main reason why you'd want to upgrade from HD to 4K is because of the higher resolution and the quality this brings, even if the final result is only going to be shown in HD. The higher quality source material will still make for better end results. However, not all 4K cameras are created equal. Although much of a marketing hype might make you believe that just buying any 4K camera will give you the best possible quality, there are two different types of 4K camera. The first one is the consumer range cameras. These will be the replacement for the HD camcorders and smartphones we have now. They're going to be 4K or UHD resolution, but they will still be using video compression like H.264 or H.265 when it becomes more widely adopted, and chroma subsampling of 420, which makes use of just one quarter of the amount of color information that is picked up from a camera's image sensor. Cameras like this currently include the Panasonic Lumix GH4, the Sony FDR AX100, and a soon to be released Samsung S5 smartphone. In the future, most 4K cameras will fall into this consumer range bracket. If you're shooting normal scenes and you're not going to be having much in the way of post-processing, colorizing, shooting for green screen or visual effects, then these 4K consumer video cameras or smartphones are not only cheaper, but will also give you an excellent high-res output. The problem is with the compressed output. Now, whilst it reduces the file size dramatically, it also cuts out the fine detail in the image. And this is why many of us want 4K in the first place. You can think of video compression like the tone control on a hi-fi system. The more you turn down the treble, the more the fine details in the high frequencies are lost. This is the same for video footage. The more compression that is applied, the smaller the file sizes become. But the more of the fine details are lost and the clarity of the image reduces. With the current capacity of SD cards and internal memory in tablets and smartphones, this is essential because without compression, the file sizes created by 4K are huge, easily running into many gigabytes of data per minute of recording time. This could fill 64 gig of memory, for example, typically most top-end tablets and camera cards, in 10 minutes or less. To the human eye, the compression may be barely noticeable, but when you're doing things like chroma key or visual effects, you're working on a per pixel level, which you may not see, but things like chroma key software certainly will see. If you use a 4K camera with a compressed video out, you're not going to be getting the full quality. In fact, you'll have to downscale it to HD to get rid of most of the effects of the compression and the chroma subsampling. So in reality, when you've downscaled your 4K compressed output to HD, it will only produce a similar quality to that of a normal HD camera that has an uncompressed video output, like a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera for example. This is why if you want the best output for post-processing or VFX work, you're going to need the other type of 4K video camera. This is at the moment the semi-pro 4K video cameras that can output 4K in an uncompressed format, like ProRes 444, 422 or Cinema DNG RAW. These cameras also have a higher bit depth of 10 or 12 bits of data compared to the 8 bits which is norm for the consumer video camera range. This gives you a much better gradation from light to dark as you have 4096 levels for each colour in 12 bit and 1024 levels for 10 bit. Compare that to just 256 levels that you have for an 8 bit output. Again, this affects post-processing and VFX work, but it will also give you much more control if you're going to be doing colour grading to the video output. Until just over a year ago, this type of quality output was reserved for professional cameras like the Red Scarlet, the Arri Alexa and the Canon C500 for example, all of which cost north of $30,000. Then came along Blackmagic Designs, with first a Blackmagic Cinema Camera 2.5K, and that's the one I'm using right now to record this, and then just recently the Blackmagic 4K production camera. 
At under $3,000, which is less than a tenth of the price of a pro cameras, it's getting close to the mainstream 4K cameras, but with a professional quality video output. At the moment, there isn't much competition to the Blackmagic 4K production camera in a price bracket, but that's sure to change at some point in the future. For now, the nearest would be the Panasonic GH4, which can give you an uncompressed output in 422 in 8 or 10 bit depth but you will have to use a separate recorder to capture it from the GH4's HDMI port because it will only save compressed video to the SD card. Which type of 4K camera will suit you the most will be much more down to what you're going to do with it. If you intend to shoot chroma key or have lots of post-processing, then cameras with an uncompressed output will suit you the best. However, there are downsides to the uncompressed video output though. One of the main ones is that they create huge files, especially if you shoot them as cinema DNG raw files. This not only requires a bigger hard drive storage, but all that extra data takes its toll on your computer. You'll need a powerful CPU with lots of RAM in order to apply effects like chroma key to uncompressed video. Rendering them with an alpha channel for editing later takes much longer than the smaller but lower quality compressed H.264 files. So yes, while we're getting 4K, it comes with compromises. Until someone makes a camera that combines the lower cost and ease of use of the consumer range and has the option of the uncompressed high bit depth output of say a Blackmagic 4K production camera, we're going to have to choose between two camera types or by two cameras. Are you facing this dilemma with your potential 4K camera setup? If so, let me know what you're looking to do in the comments below. And if you like this video and found it useful, then please give it the thumbs up and don't forget to share and subscribe. And you can hop on over to video-alchemy.com and join our free newsletter. So, my name's Paul Shillito and this has been a Video Alchemy production. So, hope to see you in the next video. Bye.